All right, welcome back to another episode of Real Life Fisherman. Uh, I'm gonna do a how-to video today. I'm gonna install a Minn Kota Tarova 24 volt, 80 pound thrust trolling motor on this uh, Sun Tracker Fishing Barge 20, buddy of mine. So we're gonna hook him up. The cool thing about the Fishing Barge uh, is it's kind of set up almost already for doing a trolling motor. Uh, it's a real popular thing now. Everybody wants to turn their pontoon boat into a fishing boat. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are already offering you options to make that happen. You get the best of everything. You get the whole family package of the pontoon. Take everybody out, but you can still use it for fishing. What they've done here, what makes the fishing barge different is they already have a cutout in the door for the trolling motor to go underneath and it'll swing over it. Um, they also already put in a, a plug here, but all of the fishing barges for whatever reason um, only set up for a 12 volt and most fishing packages they sell with a pontoon only come with a 12 volt like 55 pound or 42 pound thrust trolling motor it's not enough so you always want to go with a 24 volt at least on a, on a pontoon they're big they're heavy um, you know as far as moving around with an electric motor so they're high sided you're gonna be fighting a lot of wind so I would at the very least, get a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust trolling motor. Um, and that's what we're gonna be installing today. We'll put a quick release bracket so it can be removed so you can still enjoy the pontoon, jump off the front and have it not in your way. But uh, yeah, pretty cool to do. And it's becoming more and more popular. So check it out. Okay, so we're gonna unbox it and uh, you know, just to save you some time and show you how I do it. It also makes it a nice area for you to work on. So instead of trying to pull this whole thing out, cut it down like this. Now you can flip this thing out like this. And now you won't scratch your uh, brand new trolling motor up while you're installing your bracket. Uh, and it just makes it so much easier to get out of the box. Don't lose this. Your heading sensor is in there. They're doing a lot better job of packaging them. The styrofoam is actually uh, pretty nice. They used to not have that and you would get chips on your uh, your motor and stuff like that in shipping. Now we're going to take these side plates off. Bolt on the quick release and then we'll take it over to the boat and uh, mock it up and mount it. Don't lose those screws, they always fall out. This one's got the cord through, so you just have to kind of swing that to the side. And then I use this one that comes all the way off. I put the screws in there as a tray. Okay. And there's two main types of quick releases for Minn Kota trolling motors. So there's this uh, metal one. I like better for the pontoons, the composite plastic one um, has a smaller footprint, but it has a, a handle that you have to pull out like this uh, that goes all the way through and being in that pontoon between those the door in the front it doesn't leave you a lot of room to pull that out so on a pontoon boat i would just recommend going with the uh, metal slide quick release uh, the new part number here is the uh, mka 1603 so Go with that one for a pontoon. Mounting hardware. And there's a set screw here on the side that holds the two halves together. So this right here is your base. Right here, the notch is your base. This is the top, goes to the trolling motor, and it slide in like this. And that goes into that notch, 
So you can put a padlock through right here so nobody steals your trolling motor if you don't, you know, take it off every time or you're, you know, camping or somewhere and you don't want somebody to steal it. Holes line up. Okay. You use the uh, shorter bolts, four bolts. Four through deck bolts and four mounting bolts. These make it a little bit tricky here. Better to kind of flip it on its side to do this part. These um, old ramp release brackets that slide through here on the Tarova make this a little bit tricky. So you just gotta pretty much try to. It's a dexterity test. Seven sixteenths, so one thing you can't really do is ski, huh? Yeah, you can. Really? Yeah. So we put ski toes on the back. They're a big hoop that goes over them and they bolt underneath the, the deck through the brace. What? Yeah. This one you couldn't really ski at the 90. You could tube behind it though. We have pontoons now that'll that'll do over 50 miles an hour. That's insane. So they're fast. That's insane. They're fast. That's a game changer for me. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're fast, dude. I'll, I'll show you a video. I've late tested one with just a 250, and you can get pontoons with 350s or 400s. And uh, with the one with the 250, we were passing ski boats like they were standing still almost. What? Just lean back in reclining chairs with stereo system blasting. And oh, no way. Just smoking across the water. People were Dude. mouths gaping open. That's amazing. Like, what? Yeah, they're, they're fast now. So we're going to mock up where we're going to mount it on the front here. Um, you can mount it to the side, um, which gives you more room to come up the stairs or have the, uh, the base of the quick release be kind of out of your way. Um, so you, could, you can mount it over to one side more, uh, usually this side and be fine if you want to do that. The only thing is, is when the trolling motor is turning around, you have to make sure that the head of the trolling motor doesn't interfere or hit the door here. And usually what happens is this cable, that coiled up power cable there, um, slaps this as it turns. And I just don't like that. So the trade-off for me is, yeah, it's right in the middle, but you also, you're not getting that uh, cord kind of you know slapping on this as as you uh, turn back and forth so i go with it right in the middle you want to make sure this here this cutout where it stands up and that that little u-shaped cutout in the chassis you have to make sure that that is out past the outermost edge of your boat pontoon whatever doesn't matter this has to be out past the outermost edge or when you deploy this thing, the shaft is gonna hit the, the edge of your boat. So it won't work. And you'll have extra holes in your boat because you'll have to move it. That's pretty much it. So easiest thing to do now with this particular style of bracket is uh, take some masking tape and kind of mask down the side here and mark where you have it and slide it back off and uh, mark your holes and drill them in the deck. So I'll do that next. Remember the notch goes to the back. OK, 
trust me, you don't want to find out. Stainless on stainless seizes up all the time. It may, you may get away with it, but don't gamble. But you do turn into the Tin Man. So, a little trick. Turn this sideways right here when you take this off because there's your pin. If it's the other way around, I think you'll fall right out and you're kind of screwed without that. Before you take this off, turn the shaft to where these are level. Pro tip. Pro tip. So like it says on the uh, paper, this is for shipping only. It's the red one, don't use it. 9 sixteenths prop nut on a 80 pound. Just hold the prop. A lot of times the butt connectors that come with these trolling motor plugs are just regular uh, butt connectors. So I always cut them off and put heat shrinks on. And you can either run a fat piece of heat shrink tubing over the whole thing right here, kind of keep it together and make it look neat and clean. Or, uh, you know, run some split loom over it and make it look really trick. So that's what I got today. I, I'm gonna use the Split them. So we're gonna pull this board out underneath here. What we got to do is uh, we're putting in a three bank battery charger. We're going to mount the battery charger to that board, but we have to run a bank, one of the wires back to the back. So we have to extend it and go down through the rigging tube here under the deck and go back to the, the crank battery in the back so that all three batteries will be charged and maintained. So to do that, get all this stuff out of your way. Take the fire extinguisher out. We're gonna take these battery tray in here out. That is a group 27 and we're putting in group 31 batteries. I recommend going with the biggest battery you can afford or you can fit. Um, group 31s is the, about the biggest size you can get um, that I know of uh, anywhere. That's what I run in my boat and you're gonna get the longest battery life out of those. So, uh, which you're gonna need out here on a pontoon. So they say, go ahead and remove that one. That one comes factory installed. Uh, there's a factory installed circuit breaker here. That will work. You can upgrade to another style breaker if you want, but not really necessary. So the easiest way to get that board out on a sun tracker, remove this fuse panel. There's four screws holding it in. screws in the cup holder and allow this to pull out that gets it out of the way of this carpeted board here that we're trying to get out so that way it slides it in and out a lot easier and then we put that back in when we're done
Now like I say we're gonna mount our uh, charger on here. We're also gonna be installing a receptacle on the outside of the helm here. Uh, so you can just plug your extension cord in directly right when you get home and leave it in, let it charge and keep your batteries maintained and healthy. It's super simple. You won't have to climb up in the, in the boat to plug it in and reach under here and pull out a cord, just plug it in on the side. So we'll, we'll do both of those things right now. So what we're gonna do next is install a uh, receptacle for the onboard battery charger. And we're gonna install a three bank onboard battery charger. I would never install a trolling motor, uh, especially a 24 volt trolling motor without installing an onboard battery charger. You're just gonna make your life hell not doing it. Um, so just do it right and install the whole kit the first time. Do the trolling motor, do the batteries, do the battery charger. You're protecting your investment with this and your sanity. Um, having to try to pull batteries in and out or drag a charger in every time uh, gets old real fast and your batteries won't be charged when you want to go fishing, which is going to cut into your quality time. So uh, we'll install this charger outlet. And so what you're going to do on this one is I, I put it in this area here. That way when you get home, all you do is you plug your extension cord in right there and go in the house. We're gonna do that right now. You need a, for this one, which I always go with the wired in one, not the kind that you just clamp onto your cord. This holds up better over time. Uh, it's about 10 or $15 more, but way better. Simple, I mean, it's all color coded. When you cut the cord, there's a white, a black, and a green, and it's color coded on here and just screw it in. It's pretty simple. I'll show you how that it's done um, in a minute. Uh, we're gonna drill our hole right now. It's an inch and seven eighths for this Merneco, uh one. I'm fully aware of what's behind here, but anytime you're drilling into something, obviously make sure there's not something behind there you're gonna tear up. But in this area is right here where I like to go. So when you extend these, um, they have extension kits, but you don't need to buy those. Um, what you need is some just 12 gauge duplex wire. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon or, uh, you know, West Marine or somewhere. Um, just cut it. You, the fuses need to be at the battery. So cut it between the the fuse here, like that, and then extend this and run it back to the battery and then butt connector and heat shrink this on at the battery and good to go. So. Alright, so I've shoved the wire down through the, the rigging tube here and the um, easiest way to do this to run it to the back. Here is, uh, let me take my watch off. It's just kind of feed it to yourself. Um, I'm gonna pull, pull this down. Just watch them deck screws. I don't know, they bite. Just, <laughs> I know. We gotta kind of do everything slowly, methodically. Don't get too jerky. That's screws sticking out places you don't know and and fiberglass boats you got fiberglass we always refer to it like on a fiberglass boat you're sticking your hand up a porcupine ass <laughs> Put the, the cord yeah, there. the rigging tube. 
where all the control uh, cables and everything, the steering cable is coming from the motor and going up to the helm. Okay, so we got our wire ran back to the crank battery and hooked up to the crank battery. So now uh, we cut the uh, plug end off here. And then uh, what you're gonna do here, take the plug out of the box and uh, be careful. There's three black screws in there. They like to go missing. All right, and then what you gotta do, do it now or you forget. And then you go to put it on and you gotta pull it back out again. Put these on first. Cause these need to be on the inside of the hole. And then once we get the wire through the hole there on the outside, wired up. Like I say, we'll strip these back. I'm gonna strip it back, you know, a good inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Okay, and you got these strands. Cut those off. And it's color coded, like say, there's a green, there's a green circle, black, black, and then the nothing here, the clear is the white. So strip those back, uh, put them in there, tighten those screws down on them. Um, that's all you gotta do. Then you don't have to worry about your plug breaking inside. Um, like say, I only use these wired um, style ones. The other ones never last. And whenever you do something on your boat, just spend the money and do it right the first time. Don't cheap out and cut a corner and just get something that'll get you by for now. When you plan on replacing it later, it's just not worth it. Okay, so now we gotta put the board back in. This is a little tricky. <laughs> Okay, so this is the heading sensor. Um, so this basically tells the, talks to the trolling motor and tells it in which direction that the boat itself is facing. So it helps to try to keep the boat as straight as possible when you hit uh, anchor mode or spot lock. So uh, make sure you install it. Um, it gets its own 12 volt power source. Um, so just hook it up to something 12 volt under your dash um, an extra, you know, power location or something. Um, that's that's all. Uh, and then when you, whenever uh, you turn on the trolling motor, this will activate and communicate with it. And like I say, it keeps your keeps your boat straight. Um, before they came out with this, um, it was just relying on the GPS and the head of the trolling motor. The only problem is when you hit a spot lock location um, with the trolling motor on the front. It saves that location, but your boat can spin around 360 because it's just got one location to reference. So as long as the trolling motor's in that spot, it doesn't know the difference. So with this, when they came out with this, kind of like a Gen 2 thing, um, this talks to the trolling motor and lets the trolling motor know which direction the boat's facing. So when you hit spot lock, this saves that location and keeps the boat in that direction as best as possible. Also, it um, doesn't matter how flat this is. This is more of a compass than a, it's not a GPS puck. It doesn't have to have a clear line of sight to the sky. Uh, it can be under a dash even. Um, just, uh, just so you know, it's, it's not a GPS puck. It's a compass basically that talks to the GPS in the uh, trolley motor. Is it like Bluetooth or do you have to wire it? It's Bluetooth. It communicates wirelessly. When we get this all powered up, we'll uh, sync it. And I'll show you how to do that. It's real simple. tighten these down just make sure you're not pinching down on the uh, 
the coating that you're actually on the bare wire. So you do want this, what appears to be upside down with a ground prong on top. There's a drain hole right here for any uh, water or moisture that got in. So it can drain out, that's one of the reasons. And the other reason, it's easier to plug the cord in with the ground prong on top. It, the extension cord just slides right on a lot easier. Okay, so everything's hooked up, wired, and uh, ready to go. Last step is to come over here, and you're going to press down this button here. I've already done it, but uh, it'll be flashing faster than this when you, uh, when you do press it down. Then you're going to come over to the head of the trolling motor right here, and you're going to hold down that pair button. You're going to hold it down, it'll be a long beep, and then it'll go beep, beep, beep when, it, when it's paired, and then it's done. That's it. Now, if you had to mark, put this, you know, way far away from the center line of your boat, there is a calibration process to go through. Uh, but really, it's on a normal boat, you know, it's not that big a deal. You're talking, you know, a few feet. So, but that's it. All wired up. Batteries are all in, wired up, and we did a uh, pretty good job. So, Thanks for watching the video and uh, hope you like the channel and uh, like and subscribe if you do and I'll keep these videos coming guys.